be discussing uh, uh, precision and how precision can affect your work and uh, affect uh, re your uh, the repeatability if you're working in small batches and uh, the fitting of components, the fit of components of uh, in joinery. So wood is removed in, in, in thousands of an inch, unlike any other any any piece of machinery, any power tool. It's it's almost impossible to achieve that size of uh, of wood. I should say the uh, to remove wood that thin. And the next, uh, again, going back to what I was saying earlier, is to count shavings. Learn to finally set a hand plane. Because in, in all cases, I'm using a hand plane for shooting board, it's, uh, or, or um, face planing or edge planing a board. Learn to finally set a hand plane, iron, and can count the shavings. So uh, this is uh, it's something you achieve after using hand tools or hand planes for a while, is to be able to to master the uh, the concept of, uh, of counting shavings. So for example, three or four two thou shavings is ten thousandths of an inch. If you're, uh, if you're hand planing multiple boards, and I'll just give an example. This is a bird's mouth plug-in uh, jig that I use for, uh, for some work. And I'll just give an example of uh, what I'm referring to. Just to make sure that the green orientation is correct. So I, uh, this, uh, this, this works with two wedges, so I wedge the piece in. And this, uh, this allows me to, uh, to work the, uh, the edge of a small board. And this is a shorter board, but I can easily, just as easily, uh, just as easily attach this, use this port, and uh, wedge this in. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent little jig that plugs into your workbench. It allows you to work small edges. So actually, we'll, we'll use this. Orientation correct. I use a, a large smoother. Just happen to have this handy. So this is a. An example of what I'm referring to. So it's important to uh, both take wide shavings. What I mean by wide is. Is the full width of the uh, of the surface you're hand planing? In this case, an edge. So it's important if you take the full width, the shaving of the full width, you're more than likely your uh, your your hand planing is uniform. So you're not very unlikely to introduce a tilt or a, a bevel in that surface. Uh, you know, we'll just this round for this one. So you can see the shaving is uh, the shaving is super thin, and it's actually the full width of that edge. So that's critical. So try to set your hand plane, try to uh, tune it, adjust it, so you actually uh, achieve this this full width and and a paper thin, actually less, much less than paper thin uh, shaving. And this uh, determines how much wood you're removing from a surface or an edge. And use this to. Uh, to count, if you count the number of shavings, this is, uh, for example, counting these shavings, you can easily achieve the, the, the width of this, in this case, the, the correct width, without having to resort to any measuring tools. So it's, uh, it's a difficult concept to explain, but I think, uh, I think, I've, done a, I think I've made it clear that uh, it's a, some, the next level of uh, hand planing. So you're not just only hand planing, but you're, you're introducing more precision into your hand planing. And, by counting shavings and ensuring that the shavings are the correct width. So another advantage of the hand plane is that it produces a finished surface while dialing in a measurement, along with uh, dialing in that precise that precision, the precise uh, thickness of uh, the bore or the edge. You're also that finished surface is also ready to glue, or ready to use uh, in a joint. So there there isn't any an, an additional step to perform. It's glue ready or ready for, for joinery and that uh, that's a huge advantage if you're using machines more than likely even a table saw or with a, with a fine blade you'll, you'll need to somehow work the edge or the face to, to have it glue ready. I try to avoid sanding as much as possible in my work I almost use very little or no sanding at all and so because I use hand planes so much I achieve that uh, 
a nice finished surface without any rounding of edges. So something else when you're uh, when you're sanding, you're uh, most likely going to round the edge. Even if you try to avoid it, you're not going to have these uh, these crisp edges, and uh, they become rounded over. And that so if you're joining two boards and you've sanded the surfaces, you uh, you are going to introduce a gap at the uh, either the top or bottom of the edge. But using a hand plane will ensure that this gap doesn't exist. So so I uh, I can't uh, advocate the use of hand planes more in your work because it's so much nicer than using uh, sandpaper and sandpapers tend to abrade the surface and crush the fibers another disadvantage to sand using sandpaper uh, in your work whereas uh, a sharpened uh, hand plane will, uh, will instead slice the fibers so the glue absor absorbs better, better adhesion and finishes absorb better too for that matter so glue ready edges are created with a hand plane unlike any other method using machines. So wood moves and releases tension when acclimating. So continually test boards or components for flatness. I usually when I'm processing or when I'm uh, when I'm creating furniture, I uh, I let the wood acclimate or stabilize, and I I reduce it in size and uh, in increments and in, in stages. So I'll reduce it in size, and I'll never never in uh, in one uh, stage bring it right down to the final thickness or dimension that I need. I'll do it in stages because the woods are still, there's a, there is a tension in, in the woods that needs to be released. So by, uh, by, uh, by doing it in stages, you're, you're allowing the, the wood, the components to slowly release that tension and acclimate. And this avoids any twisting, cupping, bowing in the wood. And this has worked really well for me. So I, uh, I strongly advocate doing that. It does take a little longer because you have to do it in stages. So typically, you can do this over a period of two or three days of uh, reducing a board down to final thickness and keeping it in the environment, the shop environment that you're going to be build, building the furniture. And again, flatness ensures good fitting joints. I use a spoke shave in my work, and which essentially is a hand plane with a short sole. Spoke shave is used on the curved or rounded surfaces. And the iron is installed bevel down, and I have an example of one. There are two versions of spoke, typical sh spoke shapes have flat bottom sold or round bottom sold. The flat bottom sold will probably get you by for most of your work, and the mark, uh, the convex sold uh, spoke shape is, is more, uh, more applicable to a, con a very concave surface because this just doesn't work on a concave surface. I have a second one, but I tend to use this flat bottom sole. So it's essentially a, a small hand plane, work with uh, more versatile and more workable using two two hands. And the uh, the iron is uh, is installed again beveled down, much like a much like a hand plane. And it's uh, either uh, they come in different versions. This one has a manual adjustment, but there are versions, a Veritas version that has a micro adjust. So that's nice too. I just happen to have these ones. But I tend to use a spoke shave in my work for uh, for edges and working edges and uh, removing the roughness of a board and, uh, that I can't normally attain through a hand point. So I just want to point that out. This is the uh, curved bottom one. It isn't very curved bottom, but it's uh, sufficiently curved bottom to be able to work concave surfaces. So again, there's considerable precision using spoke shave. Again, the fine shavings. Uh, removing fine shavings and counting shavings. Another uh, tool I like to use and for precision is a hook rule. I strongly advocate getting yourself a hook rule because uh, it isn't just a ruler, it's got the hook at the end. And what the hook does is allow you, allows you to do precise, adjust, precise measurements without worrying about, uh, if I didn't have a hook, I would need to uh, ensure that the end of the ruler is exactly at the, uh, the end of the board if I'm offsetting to a certain uh, point in the middle of the wood, but having this hook automatically ensures that. So if you're working, if you're creating multiple components and they need to be a certain uh, length, the hook rule ensures consist consistency between components. So that, that works really well. So I strongly advocate this. I've got about three or four in the workshop now. They're sold through, uh, through uh, Lee Valley Tools, and this is a Utilitas version. 
and they come in different lengths. I only have the 12 inch versions, but I understand you can get shorter 6 inch versions now. And along with that, there's a stop rule, and I'll give you an example of the stop rule. It almost serves the same purpose, but what it does is it allows you to transfer a particular uh, width or length from one board to another. So this is a stop rule. Uh, at one point I was creating a few of my own tools. There's some, some of the tools I created. And center finder tool and a tri-square, a small tri-square. And this is a, a stop rule. So what this does is you, uh, if I'm uh, offsetting at this point on a board and I need to transfer this exact width, this measurement, I would lock it in and then use this measurement to, to transfer that to a, to a second board. And that's then just slide it along and mark with a pencil. Just slide it along and mark with a pencil. So that is very uh, effective for that reason. This, is a, this has a shorter rule which is removable and I can easily I can easily insert a 12 inch rule here but uh, so the uh, <coughs> again the stop rule you can either create your own uh, this is a wood based one that I was marketing for a while and or uh, you can purchase an attachment uh, through any uh, woodworking tool retailer that uh, clamps onto a, uh, a ruler and performs the same function the panel gauge creates a scribed line from an edge. Panel gauge is essentially uh, a very large marking gauge and the line is consistent in, in a precise distance from an edge along a length. So this is essentially a, a very large marking gauge and I'll give you, I don't have a panel here but I'll, I'll give you an, ex an example. So you place this along an edge and scribe the line. There's a little scribing uh, disc and scribe the line along the, uh, the advantage of uh, the panel gauge is it works well with large white panels, unlike uh, a marking gauge is really designed for smaller boards and I'll show a marking gauge.